Can you see me? Okay. Here we go. Stuff I Heard Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Peak, And let's go. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in. Um, today happens to be Friday edition of the podcast, episode 174. Today is the 27th of December, 2019. And, uh... Just hanging out here, uh, wanting to have a conversation with you. Um, the weird part about that is, is I'm having a conversation with myself. I'm just imagining that you're sitting here with me, and I'm having a back and forth, and you're, you know, equally volleying ideas back and forth, but you're not really here. So, I'm doing this all on my own. This is called heavy lifting. And if there's one thing I've learned after 174 episodes, that if you want to lift, you just keep doing it. So, with that being said, let's talk about stuff I heard. Okay, I listened to a few podcasts today. I actually went back and re-listened to some podcasts. Um, I was on the road and had the ability to download and listen to some podcasts that I'd watched the YouTube videos of. I talked on the last episode about listening to uh, Gabriel Iglesias uh, do a podcast with Burt Kreischer on the Burtcast. Um, and, you know, listening to it is a little different than watching it. Watching it, I was kind of looking forward to Gabe doing his thing and you know really him on stage is him personifying like everything that is comedy with him like he is you know using physical comedy as well as doing the voices and walking around and being silly and sort of a I mean he's on stage he's performing it's a performance and when he's interviewing like he's giving you some really heart to heart sentiments and you get this sensation listening to him that maybe he partied a little too hard the night before and um you know, they're just hanging out and having a good time and talking about, talking about comedy and how they got started and how they met and, you know, things like that. And <clears throat> There's a lot of it that, that Bert actually pays attention to and listens to and, and you know, and Gabe's very uh, open about what's going on. So um, that was fun to listen to again. And also, I re-listened to um, the Two Bears, One Cave episode, uh, the latest one that they had. Um... And I got a lot of stuff from it that I didn't really pay attention to watching it. I mean, I watched it, and it was entertaining and all that, but, you know, listening to it the second time, I got more from it, and it's funny how some things like that happen. Like, you can consume something one way and then go back and listen to it again, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I didn't even picture that part. It's sort of like, um, you know, the recent Star Wars movie that came out, The uh, Rise of Skywalker, Okay, I've made a comment that I want to go back and see it again, and I plan on doing that. Um, I want the crowds to die down just a little bit before I subject my wife to sitting in a crowd again. And, you know, it's it's a commitment. It's a very long movie, and, you know, if you're going to sit there and watch it, like, you gotta you got to empty the bladder more than once. And it's like, oh, we're going to make it? I don't know if we can make it. There's so much that happens in that movie, though, I feel like if I go back and watch it again, I'm going to get more from it. So anyway... Um, the reason I'm doing this podcast tonight and not tomorrow is, uh, we're going to visit my wife's family and there's usually, um, for this kind of visit, there's going to be a lot of people there because we're doing Christmas at her folks. And so all of the, you know, brothers and sisters and kids and whatnot are going to come over and, um, I cooked some meat that we're going to take down there and so, you know. We got that to deal with, and I'm sure we'll have to set up chairs and tables and whatnot. And all of it is just too hectic for me to try to do a podcast down there. Now, not to say that I won't get down there, and who knows? I mean, her dad may be like, "Hey, man, I want to talk politics," and I, and and Lord help me, Lord help me, if he wants to talk politics, because he's all in on the on the Republican bandwagon. If it's red, he, he's in it. Uh, man eats, sleeps, and drinks Fox, mix Fox News, and I love him, and I just, there's something about drinking one Kool-Aid all the time. You don't get the full picture, and you don't ever get to form an opinion of your own because you're always listening to and buying into whatever people are selling you. See, here's the thing. Like, if you grew up in an area where everybody's super liberal, you know, then you're going to be super liberal just by association, you know. They're going to tell you that, you know, guns are bad and uh, the world is flat and, uh, you know, dolphins can't speak so we got to take care of them and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is, okay, those are not 
terrible ideas in the big scheme of things, but also like there are certain things that you got to kind of balance out and, and there is balance. Like there's a reason there's a two party system that seems to have evolved over time. I wish there was more parties. I wish there was more of a voice for the independent voter, for the libertarian, for the green party, for the tea party, whatever. I wish there was more of a voice for everybody, but the money seems to be all funneled through two camps, just two. If you're not in one of those two camps, you're just left behind. They just seem to steamroll you and no one wants to hear your opinion or they figure out a way to, to poo-poo your opinion, which is really crappy. Um, but, you know, here's the thing. Like, the world is advancing. Things are happening. I just read on Twitter that Russia has come out with this new crazy missile that travels at 27 times the speed of sound. Now, I don't know how to calculate that, but it sounds ridiculous. It's an intercontinental missile that travels at 20, 27, is it 27 or 22? 22 times the speed of sound. At that point, who cares? I mean, 27, 22, whatever. Hypersonic, intergalactic, inter, interstellar, inter whatever, continental missile. Why would you need that? But here's Russia, and they have it now. And it was announced today. So, there's that bit of fun. Because guess what's next to Russia? Oh yeah, Korea. Yeah, hmm. how about that? Whenever Russia needed money, they just sold stuff to bad guys. Because, you know, whatever, we make, we make weapons. Come buy our weapons. And that was one of the things that I learned um, watching one of the Star Wars movies recently. There's a scene where they steal a... It's not the latest one, but they uh, they steal a ship from these rich folks. And on there, they're like, I wonder what he does for a living. He must be a bad guy. And they, the guy hacks into the computer and he goes, oh yeah, they make ships for the, for the Empire. And then he hits a button and they go, oh, and they make ships for the good guys too. How about that? They're making money on both ends. So... You know, just when you think you're altruistic and doing the right thing, maybe you're not. Maybe America is not altruistic and trying to do the right thing. Maybe they're just selling that to us. And in reality, if you live somewhere else, you're looking at us as the biggest empire that the world's ever known. I mean, we're doing what Rome couldn't do. We were able to transplant our people into other countries. We are able to control everything. Control resources, use our influence, all of that stuff. And we did it in the name of security. We did it in the name of, you know, saying that we had the right to be there, that we had the obligation to protect people. Everything is done in the name of protection. Everything is done in the name of trying to help other people. And I don't think it's that. I don't think it's altruistic. I don't think it's just because you wanted to help people. Every time we have a conflict in this country, we learn later on that there was a reason we got involved. And it was usually a very selfish reason. You know, a lot of people talked about going to war with, uh, after 9-11, that there was weapons of mass destruction. And then later on, it was, well, we didn't find any. Yeah, I don't know. Wasn't nothing there. But we're here now. And we've pissed off a lot of people, and now there's people shooting at us. So we gotta, we got to kill those people because they're shooting at us. And, oh, well, sorry we drone struck everybody in that area and happened to kill innocent people, but now there's even more bad guys after us, so we got to keep fighting them. And in the meanwhile, technology advances, and we get supercomputers on our phones. And the world keeps clicking along. Kind of makes me think... Maybe we're only on this earth for a good reason, for a short America, for a short period of time. Maybe there's a reason that we're not meant to live forever. Because let's face it, if you lived, <clears throat> if you lived a hundred years, okay, the invention of the car. I mean, let's face it, it was around that time. Not the actual invention, but people started noticing there was cars. Okay, a hundred years ago. And then roads, because you got to have roads for the cars, right? Before that, it was just dirt everywhere. Dirt paths and, you know, dirt roads and stuff like that. 
we got to build roads, okay? And then once you build roads, oh, well, we got to we got to have like some laws for this stuff. We got to set like, you know, speed limit law and maybe wear some seat belts and I don't know, possibly turn on your lights once in a while. That'd be great, you know. Maybe add a crosswalk or a stoplight that way people can cross the roads and that way intersecting traffic won't just run into each other, you know. And then we got to have somebody enforce those laws. So we you know, we got to have cops and you know, everything just steamrolls faster and faster and faster. The radio comes along. Phonograph, television, internet, cable, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Man, technology has really advanced so rapidly in just one person's lifetime. And I don't think it's ever done it this quickly before. And I wonder if it's going to lead us to a point where we end we actually have some sort of problem happen. Something goes wrong. Maybe somebody gets a hold of one of those supersonic crazy speed missiles and says, Hey, let's just let's just start bombing people, man. We got the capability. That would suck. That would really suck. We've lived a very easy life here in America for a very long time. We are very privileged to have lived on a piece of land that's protected by oceans on either side of us. We have neighbors to the north and the south. They're, let's face it, pretty peaceful. I mean, there's no real conflict. We're extremely lucky. Now, what would cause that luck to run out? One of those high-speed missiles could really shorten the gap. It's kind of terrifying to think about. Where would be a good place to be? Where would be the ideal spot? If you wanted to avoid conflict, where would you go? I mean, let's face it, if Russia shoots missiles to America, where, what are we going to do to, to hide? Where are we going to hide? The fallout from it is going to go in all directions. America is not just going to take a hit. They're going to retaliate. It's going to be chaos and war everywhere. It's going to be the next war. So how do you identify, how do you stop that? How do you limit that? There used to be a saying that if you have two people yelling at each other, that sometimes the only way they'll listen is to a softer voice. I think I heard that from a Prince album or a movie or Purple Rain or something. But maybe there's something to that. Maybe instead of Donald Trump yelling and screaming and that, you know, we're the biggest, we're the best, we're going to bomb you, blah, 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 just anger and filth and frothing and whatnot. And General Putin over in Russia just ruling with an iron fist and murdering people right and left. Maybe it would be a nice turn of phrase to have someone like, I don't know, Tulsi Gabbard as our president. Someone who lives the... Aloha mentality. Someone who has served overseas in combat. Someone who knows what it means to sacrifice and takes personal life with great responsibility. Someone who would bridge the gap of diplomacy instead of just acting. Or maybe it's the fact that Donald Trump's so crazy that that people are a little nervous to do anything because they're afraid he's going to do something. I don't know. See, that's just it, though. I'm not, I'm not on a political side. I don't have a political stance. I'm just saying, if you keep doing the same things over and over again and it's not working, try something different. Think outside the box a little bit. Be willing to compromise. Be willing to listen. It'd be easy for me just to say, yeah, let's just destroy everything. I was in the Marine Corps, I get it. Sometimes you need to squash a bug. Okay? I get it. Does it mean it's right? Just because you can? I watched some stuff on TV this week. I finished up the uh, Lost in Space series, uh, season two on Netflix. And it was awesome. Um,. I read comments sometimes online about people talking about the series, saying they don't like it, and I don't get those people. Um, 
I liked it. I thought it was really great. I thought all the acting was great. The sci-fi was great. The 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 special effects looked amazing. Everything looked really smooth. Um, I really like the integration of the robot into the story. You know, I grew up with watching the show when I was a kid, and the robot was kind of clunky and sort of looked like a, a giant uh, trash can. And this one looks menacing and and you know powerful and mysterious, and you don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy at times. And you know this, it's interesting the way they wrote the story and the way that they're portraying the robot in this series, and it's really good. The kids that are on the show are really good. There's a lot of good acting up and down. Parker Posey plays. Uh, Dr. Smith, which is a weird stretch to go from, you know, the the Weasley guy on the TV show to to this, because her on this, she is, she, she plays a good. Uh, I don't know if you can call her a bad guy. She's not really the villain, but she kind of is at times. It's a very interesting role. She's the villain you sort of root for in a way, if that makes sense. She's all trying to do it just to survive. I don't give anything away. I know people are still watching it, but anyway, it's good. It's really good. This season, you're introduced to more robots. One in particular is called Scarecrow, and Scarecrow is is awesome. Um, <laughs> there is an interesting interaction between Will Smith and... Uh, the robot and Scarecrow and there's a big fight scene later that that is awesome that you I don't want to give anything away God I don't want to give anything away I know people are still watching it it's just it's brand new but I'm excited about it I like it uh, I need to just come out and just have spoiler you know conversations because I know that people will be like you know I don't want to watch it yet I'll, I'll just listen to this later and then they'll come back and listen to it later uh, but I don't want to spoil things. I don't want to be that guy. I know, you know, people always say, you know, don't be that guy, man. And you're right. You're totally right. Um, how about this? How about if you don't want to hear any spoilers? No, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Let's just say the ending of season two has me with a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions about what's going to happen next. Where these people never mind. I can't even I can't even talk about the parameters of what I want to talk about. Jeez, just know that it's good. Okay, watch Lost in Space. It's really good. Um, I also watched The Mandalorian, the season finale on Disney Plus. Um, it ended really well. I talked about it last episode where I felt like it was building up to a huge fight scene, and I was right. It's a huge fight scene. There's some stuff that happens that I was not expecting. And there's an emergence of something called a dark saber. I don't know what the dark saber is. I did check on Twitter and it has something to do with a character in the Clone Wars series. Um, I haven't watched those. They're on the Disney Plus app. It's like a cartoon series. But this dark saber sort of looks like a lightsaber, but it's it's it has the absence of light. It's so weird looking. And I don't know if it's supposed to be like a like a lightsaber that the Sith wield, or if it's, I don't know, I don't know the whole seer, the whole story behind it, I gotta do some research. And I'm sure that right now, everybody's Googling it, going, freaking out, going, what is this, what is that lightsaber thing? And then they're like, what's a dark saber? Just like me, okay? There's some kind of story about how the Mandalorians used to fight against the Jedis, but then they fought together, and at one point, a Mandalorian became a Jedi, and so, I don't know. Somehow they're going to tie all these these lore stories together to have a big thing at the end. But I don't know. I don't know how many seasons they plan. Here's the thing: like most of these seasons, you hear about people talking about they write for a show and they write four seasons worth to start with. They pitch four seasons. Like, listen, this is going to be the show. This is what we're going to do this season. The next season, this, and they have like a plan, and everything's got to have an arc. Okay, so every episode has an arc. You have a, hey, we're going to go to the store, and then you go to the store, and then you're at the store, and then something happens, and then you get home. That, you know, you, you begin with a plan, you 
go through the, the situation and you achieve the thing and then you get to the end. That's the arc. Okay. When you pitch a series, you pitch four seasons and you say, this is what we're going to do this season, leading up to this season, then this season, and then the fourth season we're going to do it like this. And you sell it. That's how you sell it. Some people do it with six seasons. Some people do it with ten. Who knows? Whatever the situation is. Most of them I hear say they do four. Now, if you remember, a lot of people that have uh, shows for longer than four seasons say, yeah, the writing kind of sucked after the fourth season. Well, yeah, because they had to change writers because the original writers were like, yeah, I'm out. I want to go work on another project. I'm tired of this. And that's kind of what happens. And I'm hoping that... Uh, I'm sure that John Favreau has a plan for these uh, four seasons. Um, I'm just saying four seasons out loud. I'm not, I don't know anything for certain. But I'm sure he has a plan, and I am looking forward to watching it. Uh, I am a fan. I'm a little disappointed in the fact that Disney seems to have put out this platform without a whole lot of original uh, content. They're relying heavily on their catalog. Um, if you were the average consumer and you spent the money to get Disney Plus for the Mandalorian series, right now you're thinking, okay, I just watched it, now what? I mean, don't get me wrong, there is a big benefit to if you want to watch a Disney movie not having to dig DVDs out of a crate somewhere and find the DVD player and plug it into something and watch it, you know, having the digital movies available to just hit on your phone or a watch or an iPad or a, you know, fire, fire tablet or whatever, that's pretty convenient. And, you know, to think about how movies have advanced over the years in my lifetime from watching them in drive-in theaters to, you know, VHS tapes to, you know, DVDs, uh, Blu-ray, and then digital now. It's just, it, the, the leap is amazing. And kind of makes you wonder what's coming next or if it's, or if nothing's going to come next. If it's just going to stream a little faster, if everything's going to be a little faster, a little smoother. You know, maybe they'll have some some type of a black mirror optical input that you put in your eye like a, like a contact lens and you just think of a movie and all of a sudden it's playing and you, you can, you can kind of zone out and watch the movie without anything. Maybe, who knows. Who knows? But anyway. Um, so, I also listened to Dr. Drew After Dark, episode 46. He interviewed Tom Segura. Tom Segura, of course, is of Your Mom's House podcast, and he's on Two Bears, One Cave. Um, Dr. Drew, you may have seen him on Loveline. Uh, that's where I first met Dr. Drew back in the day. He did Loveline on K-Rock. And, uh, he does this Dr. Drew After Dark show, and it's really disturbing because they have people call in with weird questions about their sex life and their health and their different medicines they're taking or different drugs that they're doing, and how does this affect this, and how does this do that? And he's, you know, he's trying to give people advice, and they're just... A lot of people are just train wrecks, and sort of this show is a way of poking fun at that kind of stuff and and trying to help people, but at the same time, uh, I think that Tom and, and his wife Christina are just wanting to kind of gross Dr. Drew out just to see if they can, because he is a doctor, um, but every once in a while they come across a case where Drew's like, oh, that is disgusting, <laughs> and they they have a special guy now that they're... Uh, talking to on a regular basis um, and so yeah uh, check it out if you like that kind of stuff and uh, just be prepared it's kind of gross um, I also listened to uh, Whitney Cummings podcast Good For You she recently interviewed Ronan Farrow um, she makes mention of of um, Woody Allen and just the name Pharaoh I'm wondering if he's Mia Pharaoh's kid maybe or somehow related to Mia Pharaoh anyway um, Ronan Pharaoh has a podcast and a book out called Catch and Kill and 
He talks about the Me Too movement. He talks a lot about Harvey Weinstein. They talk a lot about Harvey Weinstein and Epstein. And they talk about a lot of people who came forward during the conviction of Harvey Weinstein. And this guy apparently used to work for NBC and he broke some stories about it. And they tried really hard to go after him to get him to keep the story quiet. Uh, but he did not. Uh, there was actually, they actually talk about how uh, the CIA or the, the FBI, somebody used a lingerie model to sort of catch Harvey on a wiretap. And they were able to convict him using the wiretap. I think it was like the final straw that, that let everything come open. But it was just, it was, it was devastating to hear um, all of the things that he supposedly did, and yet he was sort of responsible for making a lot of great movies during the time that he did all this horrible stuff. It's just amazing that people do all this kind of stuff when they seem to be in a position of power. And I think I heard it once on... Uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Um, I think that's where I heard it from originally. I said, sex is not about sex. Or sex abuse is not about sex. It's about power. And this guy, let's face it, he kind of looks like a troll. And this was an abuse of power. This was him abusing women and abusing them in a way to get power, to feel powerful. And in reality, he's just an evil troll. And I feel really bad for all the people that were hurt uh, during this time. And even Whitney talks about an early interaction with him where she felt like she was, you know, looking back now that she was in danger. And it just so happens that circumstances led themselves to where she kind of felt like something was up and didn't show up for a certain thing. And um, that may have been what saved her. But... Man, I tell you, it's it's hard. Um, you know, people joke about that kind of stuff happening. Oh, you want this role? Well, you know what you got to do. You know, that was the ongoing joke when I was a kid growing up. Is actresses who went to Hollywood and tried to make it had to do some horrible stuff to get their roles, and it was just sort of accepted. But you know, after all the truth comes out, you go, Oh my God! Like I thought that was just a joke. I didn't think that was real. But it's sort of like the thing with Michael Jackson. Like, everybody felt really uncomfortable about watching him anytime he was around strange kids. And it's like, what's he always doing with these kids? And then when everything come out, you're like, well, of course that's what's happened. Duh. But we were all making jokes about it at the time. We were all, you know, talking about how, yeah, we, that kind of stuff happened, I guess. But it always seems like it's, like, over there. It has nothing to do with our life. Until it happens to someone close to us. Hmm. Kind of makes me think about this Russian missile again. It's all over there until it has something to do with us. Hmm. Tulsi was in our area this past week. I never, like, <clears throat> I never got the chance to meet her. Um, it would have been cool. Uh, I, I would love to have had a, a sit-down discussion with her on a podcast. There's no way she'd do my little podcast, but still, it'd be interesting to have a discussion with her as a fellow, as a fellow veteran. Um, but she came to the area. There's people around who say they got to meet her, and she did a local radio station. Um, she went and visited one of my wife's friends who owns a shop in Lake City, and that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. All I'm saying, folks, is just let, let's start thinking differently than we normally do. Let's start asking different questions. Let's challenge ourselves to be better people. Let's not be so divisive. Even our stupid area right here is so, are you from Clemson or Carolina? And then they just, they just, 
it's like barking dogs. They just bark at each other all the time about the stupidest stuff that has nothing to do with anything. None of it matters. But they get so passionate about it. It's like... We're so divisive amongst each other. And we can't move forward as a people until we figure out how to fix that. So here's my challenge to you. If you're one of those people, start asking yourself, why am I this way? Is it because it's what I'm taught, or is it because I really believe it? That's it. Take that first step. Let's start that conversation amongst ourselves. Am I just too lazy to learn something else? Or am I just that insecure that I have to believe whatever my dad or my mom tells me? And then start looking around, asking questions. Don't watch just one news source. Get your news from other places. Compare it. There's reports out of people who are neighbors. One's a Democrat, one's a Republican. They get the exact same paper. Same photograph on the front. Different headline. One's for the president, one's against the president. It's all over. People are just trying to sell you whatever you'll buy. I'm just saying, don't buy it. That's it. I'm going to end this now. Um, thank you to everybody who's wrote me Merry Christmas. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who uh, has been part of this podcast. Um, the next interview is going to be New Year's Day. The next podcast, New Year's Day. New me, new you, right? New year. Yay. 2020. I have a feeling something big's going to happen. I hope it has nothing to do with that Russian missile. But, 2020. Let's go into 2020 with a different mindset. Let's start asking ourselves, what can I do to make this world a better place? What can I do different? What can I look at different? Is there something I need to get involved with? Maybe it's something in my community. Maybe it's my neighbor. Maybe it's my church. Maybe it's this podcast I listen to. Maybe I can have a voice. Maybe I should start my own podcast. Maybe you should. I don't know. I'm excited about it. Thank you, everybody who listens. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe. I only have one person that's reviewed my podcast on iTunes. They gave me a three star and said, eh. That's the review. It just says, eh. So, oh well, I guess, yeah, I guess that's better than two stars. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being part of this. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Cue the cow. Ooh.